Okay, everybody, welcome. Uh, today is September 2018, and um, this is the Teach Aperio Teaching and Learning Call. Um, and I am Trisha Gordon at the University of Virginia facilitating today. So welcome, and I want to invite any announcements uh, that you may have. Hi everybody, this is Wilma. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody that the call for submissions is currently open for the virtual conference. The virtual conference is going to be November 6th and I'm pasting the, the conference URL into the chat there. Um, so we, we really encourage you to get those proposals in. Um, we're um, having a couple of different tracks. We have a, a lightning round track, which we've done before, but we're also doing what's called the Sakai Garden. So if you want to pitch a improvement, um, it's going to be sort of lightning round-esque because they're going to be short presentations, probably somewhere between five and ten minutes, depending how many we get, um, where you want to pitch an enhancement project. And then we're going to actually have some live voting, and we're going to have a panel of judges, and we're going to be awarding money from the virtual conference to get that project going. So um, highly encourage you, if you have any thoughts on um, enhancement projects that are um, getting started or that you'd like to get started, um, please uh, do think about submitting those for the Sakai Garden. Um, and also, if you have any other presentations that you maybe did at Open Aperio or other regional events that you want to um, repeat for another audience, um, we do get a different group of folks attending the virtu virtual conference than sometimes attend some of our face-to-face -face events. So uh, we definitely encourage you to, to submit those as well. So I hope that you guys will consider um, putting in a proposal. And um, I do want to announce just briefly, we do have our keynote. Um, we are having uh, Matthew Raskoff from uh, University or from Duke University, and he is going to be talking about possible futures, open source, and educational values. So that's our keynote speaker. It should be an interesting topic for everybody. Um, so that's my plug for the virtual conference. Thanks, Wilma. Um, anybody else have any announcements? I know we have the UX uh, group is meeting at 11 o'clock right after this meeting, so I'll go ahead and plug that for those guys. Anything else? Um, those of you subscribed to the dev list have probably already seen this, but we did actually um, push the code freeze date for Sakai 20 back just a few weeks uh, to October 15th, I believe was the date that was proposed. And the reason for that was that um, a, a big focus has been on finding and correcting um, issues that were found in 19 that are currently in production. Uh, so we wanted to, you know, have enough time to focus on those and, and not um, have uh, the ability to, to do both that and um, work on stuff for 20. So um, we've pushed that back a little bit to be able to get some of those um, big features in to kind of tell the story for version 20. Excellent. That's good news. All right. So we do have one JIRA on our list here. Uh, let me paste in the link for everybody in the big blue button chat. Hold on one second. If you want to go take a look and follow along, or it's also in the etherpad if you want to click on it there. Um, so let's see who posted this. Group display in roster. I'm not sure who requested yeah, this. I think this was, I posted it for Adam. Is Adam on the call? Yeah, I see him there. Yeah, I think so. Hi, Wilma. Can everyone hear me all right? Yes. Yes. Good. Um, I'm kind of typing one-handed because I recently had some minor surgery on my right hand. So hopefully my voice is coming through all right since I have you on speakerphone. Um, this JIRA was posted because I realized in the roster when a user is a member of multiple groups, it is no longer showing the text of what groups they are a member of, but is instead showing a drop-down box to allow you to filter the selection. Additionally, there's no way for an instructor to 
print the roster with either a group filter or a listing of the group. So the only way to get groups uh, listed, group memberships listed for members in a site is to do the export and then use the exported file to show those group memberships. Um, if I remember, this is a regression from prior versions of Sakai, where previously it would show a space delimited list of the groups that any given member was um, enrolled in. So obviously you're looking for a fix to that regression. Absolutely, because I think the most intuitive thing for an instructor is to print the roster list, including those group memberships or including a filter of those group memberships. So Tiffany has a question for you in the chat. She says, Adam, do you have a the roster dot view group enabled for the affected user role? It's around I would have to check Tiffany, but uh, this is occurring for instructors. So uh, I would have to assume that roster.viewgroup is enabled for uh, the instructor role. Yeah, I mean, it's there are some realm permissions associated with roster, uh, one of which is roster.viewgroup. I haven't tried turning it off to see what happens uh, if it's disabled, but um, that is one of the things that uh, you can set in the realms. So it sounds like it's not disabled, it's just a drop down. Is is that is is that right? Well, well we have the drop down but we are able to print the groups, Tricia. So I don't know if that's a local customization or change. Uh oh. when when I go to print um all of the groups are shown, well the groups is, you know, shown in that list of whatever's visible on the page when I go to print is printed. I actually have a PDF printout, though, in that JIRA, where what prints is the actual drop-down saying multiple groups. So you don't get a listing of the groups, you just get the drop-down printed. Yeah, that's not the case for us. Uh, when I do the print button uh, at UVA, I see whichever group was shown. Uh, I don't see. Oh, yeah, I do see multiple groups. Sorry about that. Yep. For the ones that have it, yeah. Okay. I see what you mean now. Yep. So is there a general consensus on the call that this is a regression and that what should be displayed is a space delimited or somehow delimited textual list of the multiple groups? Well, the concern I have for it is if there are a huge number of groups. So in a class where there are, you know, many, many groups uh, for multiple assignments, um, it seems like it would be beneficial for the instructor to be able to turn that off uh, in the printout if rather than getting a massive list of groups if the same student is in a great many assignment groups, for example. So potentially a checkbox to control show group memberships. Correct. You want to add that or, comment? One of you. Or list group membership. And we are getting some consensus. At least one person so far. Yeah, so it looks like, yes, this would be a desired feature. Laura Sierra says, we recently weren't able to help a professor find and print a grand list of all this site groups and student memberships. Um, Laura Sierra, the list is likely available if you do an export of the roster because it maintains group memberships on a separate tab. So you have the membership on one tab and group membership on a separate tab. Uh, so that is a workaround, but it does seem to be the only avenue currently to get the quote unquote grand list. Tiffany, I don't remember, but I do believe 
did we make any changes to the um, print CSS for the roster tool to ensure that the groups were visible in the print? It's possible that we did, but I am seeing the drop down for multiple groups in the printout as well. Um, like Adam said, I, I was oh. looking at I was looking at some that apparently only had one group. I didn't realize that I, you know, was not looking at the right part of the page. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Test plan step. Yeah. Yeah. Tiffany, the te step plan. Uh, test plan step one. Create a site yeah. with multiple groups. <laughs> right. Well, no, it had multiple groups. The thing is that some of the members in the site were not in multiple groups, and others were. <laughs> that was the problem. I was not looking at the right member of you know in the printout. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think so, this would be. I think it would be helpful to have it as a checkbox on each roster view page where you could simply check um, whether you want groups to be listed or groups to be in a drop down. Uh, because I think that would allow the instructor to see that both on the UI and in the printout, uh, whichever print view they've selected. I mean, I, part of me hesitates over complicating this JIRA because we're adding functionality and what I'm interested in doing is uh, fixing the regression. Um, something that is irksome is if you filter for a single group, then that single group does not display on the printout. So, you know, even if I wanted to work around it by doing printouts on a group by group basis, there's nothing in the printout that reflects that I'm filtering based on the single group. Yeah, but I mean, I think if if you had a checkbox to simply say list the groups on the page instead of put a drop down on the page, um, you know, if there are multiple yeah. groups, list them all, uh, then that would be reflected in the printout, whatever print view you've selected, <clears throat> because the printout is supposed to, at least in my understanding, print the current page, whatever that view is. Fair enough. Um, okay, so I, one of you is going to need to update the comment in the JIRA about the um, proposed design decisions around that. If I am commenting right now. I won't be able to type until Monday, so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, Adam. Okay, Tiffany sounds like she's taking care of that. Thank you guys. All right, let's move on. Um, I believe we are ready to invite Wilma to give us an update on the Sakai Greater UI. Very exciting. Turning it over to you, Wilma. Thanks, Tricia. Um, so some of you may have attended um, some of the focus groups that I did over the summer, um, and a couple of them were devoted to the Sakai Greater UI that um, we've been working on. Um, but for those of you who haven't seen it yet at, at all, um, or haven't seen the latest, which the latest was hot off the press this morning, so some of this I hadn't even seen until today. Um, <laughs> So this is what we where we are uh, at the at the present moment. Um, so first, let me just recap um, for those of you unfamiliar with what I'm talking about. The Sakai Grader is a new and enhanced user interface for grading student submissions, and it's part of the centralized grading service um, enhancement project. And I actually linked this, and now I realize I, I'm showing a PDF, so I can't follow the link. Um, but <laughs> if you need a link to the concept doc, um, let me just paste that into the chat. Um, if you've not seen it already, this is the centralized grading service concept doc that we circulated um, earlier in the year. And um, it's part of this. So the, the centralized grading service kind of had two major components. One was the back end um, part that dealt with the calculating of grades and the you know, communication with um, scoring and all those things that go to the grade book. Um, 
the front end of that is the grader piece. So that's the part that the user interacts with when they're grading submissions. And um, this um, project, the both parts, the centralized grading service back end and the Sakai grader front end um, are the long site contribution. So we're, we're contributing this work um, to the community. Um, so you may be wondering when you're going to be able to, to take advantage of this. The original plan was to include as, as experimental in Sakai 20, but now we're actually, we're the, the code freeze got pushed back a little. So we're trying to kind of push the envelope a little bit and we're hoping that we can make it the default grading UI for assignments. Now we are starting with just one tool um, and then other tools will follow. So the plan is to eventually anywhere you grade um, by hand, a student submission by hand, um, that you would be able to access the same you know, consistent type of, of grading UI. But we're starting in assignments because that seemed to be the most logical place where people would be doing that type of grading the most often. Um, so we're, we're focusing just on assignments. All the other areas where you might grade something would, would still work exactly the same as they do now. Um, and our stretch goal uh, is, if possible, and this kind of hooks into some of the CK Editor 5 upgrade work that's also happening. Um, there is a view in CK Editor 5 that allows for document preview. So we're hoping, if we are able to, for Sakai 20, or if not for the dot O release, possibly for a you know maintenance release, to incorporate the the doc preview into the Sakai grader. And I'll show you at the very end a couple of visualizations, um, not based in reality, but <laughs> images only, of where we're kind of headed um, once we uh, get the the current work into um, into the code. So. Without further ado, I was hoping to do a live demo and that's why I have it on here for you guys. We do actually have a URL that I can give you at the end where you can go and try it out later. Um, but Earl and Adrian were frantically working on this uh, dev server, trying to get it all uh, ready to go before the call and it's not quite there. So um, maybe later today or tomorrow, you can go to the URL that I will give you later and, um, and check it out. But uh, I'm gonna keep you in suspense until then. Um, so we are going to be looking at some screenshots that came from Adrian's version of it. He has it running on a local um, virtual machine. So um, so the link to get to the new Sakai Grader UI um, is it, you're going to access it from the same place that you do now. So when you go into grade assignments um, and you see that list of submissions and you click on an individual user to pull up that user's submission, um, that's where the new grader would launch. So you get to it the same exact way that you get to the current assignments grading UI. Um, however, it's going to look a little different. So instead of the current screen that you have now, this is what you would see. And so you've got kind of the student submission over here on, on this side. You have on the right hand side a grading pane um, that gives you some more information. Um, along the top, you'll see you've got um, the name of the assignment and there's a little settings cog. It gives you an idea of how many you've graded out of the total in the course. Um, and then you've got the user drop down list where you could jump to a user or you can go back and forward in the list. Um, this little button here, this little X looking thing, that's actually a full screen mode. So I'll show you that in just a second. Um, and then you've also got under here, you're going to have the ability to look at multiple temps, allow resubmissions if needed, and then it's going to tell you, you know, who submitted it and when. So submitted by username on date stamp. Um, and then you'll see uh, if they have more than one item that they've submitted, you'll see submitted text, which is what's being previewed right now, um, or submitted attachments, and you would be able to click on each of those to view them um, or download them currently. Uh, we're hoping if we can incorporate that doc preview that the, the file will actually preview for you over here as well as the inline text. Um, you've got a spot down here for grading, and if there's a rubric attached, you'll see an icon. Uh, you can click on that icon to access the rubric. There's also um, buttons for feedback, attachments, private notes, and then your familiar, you know, save, save and release buttons. Um, so 
the next screen um, is just showing uh, the full screen mode. So you'll see that this has uh, a different, it's changed to show the, the downsize back to, to regular view. So it's taken over, it's hidden all of the Sakai navigation. So you're just seeing the greater. And, um, and that way you get more real estate to view the student submission. Um, but then if you wanted to, to downsize that and go back to the original view, you could just click that button and it, then it shows only in the content frame. Um, and this is showing a couple of these items open. So they've, uh, they come up in a, a pop-up window, which can be moved around. And you get the rich text editor in there. And you also, in the feedback one, you get the opportunity to record audio or video um, along with your written feedback. This is showing um, the rubric that also comes up in a pop-up window that can be kind of moved around. And as you select items here in the rubric, the grade over here will update um, to, to reflect any points that you've selected here. This is a close up of the feedback, just kind of what that looks like. Um, a little more zoomed in. This is a close up of the rubric, um, and you would just, you know, click to highlight the cells, uh, just like you normally do with the rubric. And then this is showing what's right now under this little filter cog. And hopefully we can add a few more options here. Um, currently there's the show ungraded submissions only um, checkbox. So if you don't want to see um, empty submissions, um, you can just show the, the or you can just show the ungraded ones rather. And let's see, this is what it looks like if somebody turns something in late. Um, you'll see there's a late indicator in red next to the submitted by information. And okay, and this is the private notes. That's just kind of showing you a close up of what. Um, and the private notes are between people with instructor or greater access. So if you have multiple faculty teaching a course, or if you have a faculty and TAs, um, anyone with grading ability would be able to access the private note, but not the student. And this is the student view. Um, student view essentially remains unchanged right now. Um, it's going to look the same as it would when a student goes to view their feedback. So later, we might have sort of a read-only view of the grader for the student because we're hoping to incorporate annotation down the road. But that's not there yet, so student view remains the same. Um, so I'm going to go to the chat now. I saw a lot of things kind of flashing up in chat, but I didn't want to get too sidetracked. So let me go back and see if there are any questions. Um, let's see. Dave asks, will there be functional awareness of rubrics? Um, yes. And let's see. Oh, and one thing I'll mention about the full screen mode, um, and you can actually look at this on Experimental Nightly, Experimental right now. The grade book, we, since we uh, developed the full screen um, option for the grader, and, and there were a lot of discussions going on about just the regular grade book view and not being able to see enough, um, we actually incorporated that full screen mode into the grade book as well. So right now you can go full screen on the grade book and get the whole screen for just your, your grading stuff. So, um, so those of you who have been uh, not satisfied with the amount of real estate that you have in the current, um, you know, Great book um, content window area that should help as well. So it's the same actual um, icon to enlarge and, and to um, downsize. So let's see. Um, Tiffany's asking what's the tab sort, or I have no idea. Adrian might know. Um, and we do have plans to test this for accessibility um, with the same tester that's doing the other um, accessibility VPAT work. So um, that's still to come, but um, maybe Adrian, if he's on the call, he said he was going to try to pop in. Um, if he joins us, yeah, if he joins us, he might be able to answer that, but I, I really don't know, Tiffany. Um, let's see. 
Okay, will there be means by which we can see if students accessed the feedback or is that already in stats currently? Um, I'm not sure. I don't know if that's in stats right now. It might be. It might be in the event log somewhere. Um, but currently the stu student view has not changed. So the greater component wouldn't really affect that at this point. Um, and again, some of the technical folks can correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, and I realized I just skipped a, a, a comment from Tiffany about the grading pane. Yeah, we talked actually in the focus groups about making that grading area uh, where you can move it around. You could kind of dock it wherever you wanted to on the screen. Um, but that was going to be too complicated for this iteration of it. So for now, we're just starting out with it sort of locked on the right side. But maybe down the road, um, particularly if it's something that you know people want, we might look into being able to undock it and move it to the desired location, whether that's the left or the right, top or bottom, depending on the user preference. So um, that may be an enhancement down the road, but currently um, we weren't able to incorporate that for 20. Um, let's see. Uh, private note item new in general. Yes, that is new. It is um, somewhat similar to the private uh, notes that you can put in when you're creating an assignment. You know, you can have notes that are um, or feedback or something, comments that are only viewed by certain folks. Um, so it's kind of similar to that, but it's it's a new feature. That was one that we um, were able to incorporate. Um, let's see. Is the grader accessible only in assignments or also in tools like Forum? Right now, it's only assignments. It's going to be in forums and anywhere else that you would grade. So, you know, uh, you know, file submissions or uh, short answer essay potentially in tests and quizzes, although we still have to figure out how that can best be accessed and, um, you know, make it kind of work with the current uh, workflow in those tools. Um, but yes, it will eventually be in uh, forums and other places where you would grade. And um, we're building it as kind of a sort of a web component that can be plugged into any space that requires a grading mechanism of this sort. So that it'll be a consistent experience from tool to tool. And also so that it, it kind of um, can be updated in one place and uh, you re realize the benefits across multiple tools. So let's see. Uh, Adam's question plus one. Oh, okay, that one I just answered. Um, Nice to know students check the feedback. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, we'll look into that. I'm not sure what sort of tracking events um, happen with the students checking feedback. Um, OK. OK, any other questions, comments, observations? I have a question, Wilma. Mm -hmm. Do, have, has there been any? discussion of what tool will be next to get the grader? That's a really good question. Um, no, actually, we haven't decided what's the next one on the hit list there. Um, do you guys have a preference? I'm thinking probably either forums or tests and quizzes. Yeah. I like the idea of doing forums because right now forums is so inconsistent with every other grading yeah. mechanism that it needs to be kind of put into the corral. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, forums has a lot of problems anyway with grading. Um, so I think it would definitely be at the top of the list in my opinion. I'm yeah. seeing a lot of people saying plus one for forums. Yes. I yeah, think so it looks like forums has just been elected the next yeah. one. <laughs> Good. Great. This is super exciting. Yeah, um, and the stuff that I'm showing you right now is going to be in 20. So this is actually, you know, full steam ahead. And we're, we have a, a dev server where you can try this out a little bit later. Let me just I'll grab the URL here for you. Um, oh. Adrian's asking what room we're in. Oh, 
All right, so I just told him to, so maybe if he can pop in, he'll see it. Okay, so this is the URL that you can go to, and I don't think it's ready right now. I think they're still working on it. So I would give it a little bit, maybe later this afternoon or tomorrow. You can go check it out, make yourself a course, um, and, uh, and, and play with it a little bit. And they were still working on hooking it into um, the backend service. So I don't know how much of that has been done. Um, so it's, you know, it's still kind of, you know, in flux, which is why it's on this dev environment and not in master yet. Um, but this will be in 20. So you can look forward to this in the next uh, version. Fantastic. Um, Josh notes, in the chat that um, Longside is gener generously um, developing this and contributing it to Sakai 2020. So thank you, Longside. This is super exciting. And Adrian, definitely. Thank you for all this work. It, it looks really, really good. Yeah, it looks pretty welcome. awesome. Does anybody <laughs> have any questions for Adrian now that we have him here? They were asking stuff about tab order. I had no clue. So, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anything in particular? I mean, I've been trying to I mean, I've been trying to pay attention to um to uh, you know, making it keyboard navigable. So, for instance, well, for instance the rubric panel, right? So, when you when you close that either by clicking done or uh clicking the cross or escaping, it takes the focus back to Back to the rubric icon, so you can keep on entering on that ad infinitum, right? So, that, so I've tried to pay attention to tab order, like the the tool tips as well, the popovers. You know, I've checked those with the keyboard and stuff like that. You know, tabbing into them, tabbing out of them. So, you know, I've been trying to pay attention to that as I've been going along. So, but no doubt there will be gaps in in that, and uh, it will we'll fix those as we as we approach the you know the RC date you know next year. So, excellent. Yep. And Tiffany has a request, Wilma, for you to present this to the accessibility working group for their feedback on the. Yeah, panel. certainly, I can do that. Yeah, one thing. Let me go back to the. Um, our initial view. Yeah, I think in one of the focus groups when we were talking about moving the panel around, there was some concern that having it over here, you'd have kind of menu, menu. It might look a little weird, um, at least for sighted users. So I don't know. You know, that's why we landed on the whole idea of, well, maybe it could be docked and people could put it where they want it. Um, but again, that was kind of beyond the scope of what we could do for this next version. But yeah, we can certainly um, present that at the accessibility call and get their feedback. Um, Dave's asking about mobile view, our view on iPad. Um, you have any comments, Adrian? No. Nothing meaningful. No, I mean I've not, I've not, I've not really considered that at the minute at all. No, I mean I don't know how you'd. I don't know how you'd show that, for instance, the content you've got there on the screen, right? The, the kind of volcano thing, right? I mean, I don't know how that would even shrink down nicely onto onto a mobile view to be graded. You know, you'd have to have the the grader controls that have to kind of sit either underneath it or above it or whatever, and then that would be in like a narrow column. I don't really know. Yeah, so, so there's still work to be done on the mobile view. Yeah, it's challenging. It's definitely challenging, you know. Might be another conversation to have with, with I don't know. It, yeah, we can also talk to the UX group and see mm -hmm. if they have thoughts on um, what it should do for the mobile version. Um, but you know, grading anything like this is is going to be tough on a, on a phone, as particularly, um, or even a tablet, depending on the size of the tablet. So. Yeah, yeah, it still does need to be responsive. Yeah. To, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, people. Especially would... when we kind of branch out to other tools, we want to be able to. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, hopefully, that can be solved before moving on to a new tool. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it will be. I mean, this, this, this is a. Uh, I mean, it shrinks down okay at the minute. I mean, it's um, it shrinks down fine. Um, mm -hmm. But you just get the, the the main content just gets squeezed. I mean, that's the main yeah. thing. It just right. ends up in a narrow, you know. 
Yeah. Yeah. Tiffany, did you have a comment? Yeah, um, on the, the grading pain location, uh, if there's concern for it being ugly on the left, why not just have a checkbox in that settings, that little settings cog uh, that says, put the grading pane on the left. And then keyboard users who have to encounter, you know, wouldn't have to encounter all of that content in the middle um, before they tab into the grading pane. They can just, you know, put it on the left and then tab in and enter their grades and move on. Um, the concern I have for it being on the right is that a sighted keyboard user who can see all that content <laughs> will first have to pass through all of that content with their keyboard to get to the grading box. Well, I, I, that's a good option. I just, I'm wondering as I'm listening to you talk, wouldn't the instructor, even if they're using a keyboard, need to review the student submission before they enter a grade? Yeah, but if you can see the student submission and the grading pane because you have good vision, you don't, and you you have poor hand control and cannot access that with a mouse, um, you don't want to have to tab through all of that stuff in the middle. Right? I see. Okay. So there's there's a bunch of links in your example here. You know the planetary mass. It looks like there's a whole bunch of links. So a tab a keyboard user has to tab through every single one of those links before they can get to the you know, attempt one, allow resubmission and grade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a fair point, yeah. Yeah, so we can look at some, um, maybe some preferences that users can set for the, yeah. the layout. And that would be, I think, a way to accommodate. Um, yeah, I mean, people. it'd be way easier. It'd be way easier uh, doing like Tiffany suggests there, having, you know, having it in the, in the cog and just having it so you can either have it on the left or the right rather than infinite mm -hmm. dockability. Yeah, yeah, so it's a lot easier to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Good suggestion. I like that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. There's quite so, a bit of commentary going on in the chat. Yeah, a lot of talk about the panel. Um, we'll get you guys a preference thing. So just <laughs> be patient. Might not be a dot over release, but you know, well, it'll get there. So. Oh yeah, for sure. This is super exciting, you guys. Thank you. All right, yeah, so let me um, let me show you just a few. I'm going to kind of fast forward here. You've already seen all of these. Um, a few future proposed um, images. So these these are not ready yet. These are hopefully you know kind of the direction we're headed, but it's they're not based in reality. So, um, but the the document preview that I mentioned, um, this comes straight out of the CK editor stuff. So there's a there's a build for CK editor that allows document preview. And so what we're hoping is that down the road, um, the preview area for the submission, when you click on the file name over here, it would actually view the the layout. You know, you get to see the whole document previewed over here on the side. And um, this is one of our stretch goals, actually, for 20. I'm not 100% sure it'll make it in, but we'll try. Um, and like I said, it could potentially be in a, a point release if it doesn't make it into the Dotto version. Um, but this is uh, kind of the next step in terms of the the display um, that we're planning and then eventually what we're hoping to do and again this is another build that CK Editor 5 has um, is to incorporate annotation where you can actually mm -hmm. highlight and annotate right on the submission um, and so this would give mm -hmm. you a few um, options and then you know the ability to be able to, to download either the original or the PDF with the comments that the instructor has put onto the document. Um, and so for this, the student obviously would need to be able to access that annotated version. So they would need kind of a read-only version of the grader or something. Um, so we'll have to think more about that down the road. But the, um, the annotation piece is kind of the next big thing. That one definitely won't make it into 20, um, but hopefully in 21. So, um, so just kind of looking ahead, this is kind of where we're, we're hoping to end up um, over the next year, year and a half. Wow. Those both look awesome. All right, cool. Well, that's all I've got. So if you guys have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them.
or you can pick Adrian's brain while he's here. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Adrian. And I know Earl has done a lot of work. Yeah, well. Earl has done some amazing work on the back end. His isn't as visible because it's all kind of behind the scenes, but right. um, it's super important. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Thank you, Wilma. You're very welcome. So uh, I guess I think we're going to be ending a little early today, and I'm sure folks don't mind getting back to other things. Um, just wanted to mention a couple of upcoming meetings for us. October 2nd is our next meeting. Uh, Tiffany and John Buckingham at Pepperdine are going to present on the auto groups prototype uh, to get some feedback. Um, and then on the 16th of October, Wilma and Josh are going to give us an overview, I think, of the new cloud service integration options. I guess that's Google Docs and Office 365. Is that right? Yeah, and I think there were some additional um, features and, and maybe future enhancements that um, Alan uh, from Pepperdine had suggested to Josh. They were having a, a conversation about that. Um, so we thought it might be a good opportunity to kind of brainstorm a little bit with, with some of the folks on one of the TNL calls. And I mean, see my, if, yeah, my, my hope for this would be to try and, you know, envision the goalposts a little bit. You know, looking beyond what we've got right now, and you know, even thinking beyond features to, you know, what it, what it is we want cloud storage and integration to actually be able to do for us. And Alan's got some good thoughts on that to seed the conversation. Excellent, Tiffany. I see you mentioned that um, there were some Jira's that didn't get covered in the last Jira Palooza. If you have a link to them quickly then we might have time to cover those. Okay, thank you. So we've got 42367 and that is talking about improving usability of matching questions in Samago. Yeah, so um, this was something that an instructor brought up at UVA, um, that the matching questions are very vertical. And so you have all the letters at the top um, with the match options listed next to them. And then after that, you get to the drop-down menus where you can select the A, B, C, or D. And to the right of those drop-down menus are the um, choices that you're supposed to be matching to. Um, and this is kind of a cumbersome uh, layout and um, not very cognitively helpful for users, uh, for students taking the test. And so she recommended a more horizontal side-by-side -side view uh, where you could select the responses from a drop-down menu. Um, the concern about this is that the drop-down menu could get very long if the responses are very long and you can currently put HTML in there so um, it might not be a very good possibility for some tests that may have HTML used in those um, matching options. Um, so I, I brought it to the UX group and uh, I'd be interested in hearing people's thoughts here um, about how this might be designed or redesigned, this question type might be redesigned to um, accommodate more usability, basically, to improve its usability for students. Well, I know, I know drag and drop is, um sometimes an issue when it comes to accessibility, but it seems like intuitively, if you could somehow make it more drag and drop to match the items, kind of drag them from one area of the screen to another, that would make it easier for me as a user. Yeah, we talked about that yesterday. Yeah. And it wouldn't make it easier for you if you had really bad arthritis in your hands and couldn't use a mouse. Well, that's what I said. I know there's some accessibility issues. Yeah. 
and that's actually addressed in the accessibility standards of WCAG and whatnot um, that drag and drop should not be the only method that you have to do a function. I wonder if you could have like some arrow keys that people could use instead of dragging, you know, where they just select something and can kind of tab over and down using yeah. the arrows. We have um, we have a uh, an option for some of our drag and drops. That's U, the U and D keys, um, <laughs> where you select an item and you use U to move it up or D to move it down. Um, so that that's how the drag and drop is handled in other tools, and I think that's a reasonable way to handle it. Um, or potentially resorting the responses to match the order of the item. Mm -hmm. I think I think you're at, right on about the need for an improvement to this UI, Tiffany. Absolutely. Just how exactly to accomplish it? That's the challenge. Yeah. So if anyone, you know, can think about it and make comments in the JIRA, um, you know, that would be helpful because I just made a mock-up based on what the professor was suggesting um, from her question and uh, what she mentioned in her um, message. Um, but of course, that wouldn't be as helpful for things that have HTML involved. Right. And it's also worth pointing out that in some uh, learning management systems where they have the matching questions, they only allow t plain text in the match um, areas. Mm. OK, well, thank you for for bringing that up for us, Tiffany. Was there anything else on your list? Yeah, I had another one or two. I'm trying to find the numbers. By day, by Josh, I know Josh already left. So rather than spend time, oh, okay, got it. Yep, <laughs> I think this is the one. Um, it's about Samago autosave in tests and quizzes, um, talking about improving uh, the um, the option for auto saving um, the students' answers, uh, possibility for performance issues. So. The question is whether it could be made uh, to automatically save the student's answer as soon as they type it in, you know, every so many seconds or milliseconds. Um, but then, of course, there's concern for performance uh, issue possibilities and also, um, you know, if the, uh, excuse me, I'm getting feedback on my um, audio. Um, if the um, autosave is unsuccessful, you know, concern uh, that students may be relying on it too much. So I think the proposal also involves uh, sort of notification of the student of whether something was. Um, accurately saved. Notification in, saved. in the UI itself. Yeah, uh, some some notification to the student that um, you know, there's a message that says something like, you know, a draft was saved or. Um, not successfully saved.
sounds like, uh, you know, it's a worthwhile feature to have, especially in tests and quizzes. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Um, I think it would need to be subtle enough, though, that it doesn't, like, distract people in the middle of a test. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah, I agree. And and then the problem for accessibility, too, if you have, like, a screen reader or something, that's going to have to grab focus and read its information to you or possibly have a, a hotkey that you can... Um, you know, indicate whether or not you want to hear autosave notifications. Mm -hmm. Like you can request the time from the timer bar. Okay. Well, thanks, Tiffany, for bringing those forward. And if folks have comments, please do put them in the JIRA. Vote for them also if these are features that you are you think should be a priority. And with that, I think we are ready to adjourn, unless anybody else has anything else to add or announce. I'm typing in the chat, so give a second. Okay, just some thanks and signing off. Great. Well, thanks everybody for showing up today. Thank you, Wilma, so much for presenting on the um, updates on the Sakai Grader, which look awesome. And Adrian, uh, thanks for all your work on that. Super. No problem. All right. Thanks, for your, a... thanks for your enthusiasm, everybody. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's something we can all get enthusiastic about. That's for sure. We really need this. Okay, folks. We'll have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Cool. Thanks. See you all.